Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Saraswatam Vyasam Tato Jayamudiraye Nashta Praesha Bhadrishu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavatya Tamasho Ke Bhakti Bhavati Nashtiki Reading from 10th Canto, Chapter 34 Nandamharat saved and Sankachuda slain. This chapter describes how Lord Sri Krishna saved his father Nanda from the clutches of a serpent and delivered a Vidyadhara named Sudarshana from the curse of the Angirasa sages. One day Nandamharat and the other coward men placed their family members on their bullock carts and went to the Mbikavan forest to worship Lord Shiva. After bathing in the Saraswati River and worshipping Lord Sadashiva, a form of Lord Vishnu, they decided to spend the night in the forest. As they slept, a hungry serpent came and began to swallow Nanda Maharaj. Terrified, Nanda cried out in distress, O oh Krishna, my son, please save this surrendered soul. The coward men immediately awoke and began beating the serpents with wooden torches, and the serpent would not release Nanda. Then Lord Krishna came and touched the serpent with his lotus foot. The serpent was immediately freed from his reptilian body and appeared in his original form as a demigod. He told them about his previous identity and described how he had been cursed by a group of sages. Then he offered his homage at the lotus feet of Sri Krishna and, on the Lord's order, returned to his own abode. Later, during the Dola Purnima festival, Sri Krishna and Baladev enjoyed pastimes in the forest with the young women of Raj. The girlfriends of Baladev and those of Krishna joined together and sang about their transcendental qualities. When the two lords became absorbed in their transcendental qualities, when the two lords became absorbed in singing to the point of apparent intoxication, a servant of Kuvera's named Sankachuda boldly came forward and began abducting the gopis. The young girls called out, Krishna, please save us. And he and Rama began to chase after Sankachuda. Don't be afraid, Krishna called out to the gopis. In fear of the Lord, Sankachuda left the gopis aside and ran for his life. Krishna chased after him, swiftly approached him, and with a blow of his fist, removed Shankachuda's jewel together with his head. Then Krishna brought the jewel back and presented it to Baladev. Shri Shukha Vacha Ekada Deva Yatrayam Gopala Jata Kautuka Anobhir Anadud Yuktai Prayuyuste Mbikavanam Shukadev Goswami said, one day the coward men, eager to take a trip to worship Lord Shiva, traveled by bullock carts to the Mbika forest. According to Srila Jiva Goswami, the word Ikada here indicates the occasion of Shivaratri. He further mentions that Ambikavan in Gujarat province near the city of Siddhapur. Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur adds, to, adds that the departure of the coward men specifically took place on the fourth lunar day of the of the dark fortnight of the month of Phagun. Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur also quotes authorities who claim that Ambikavan lies on the bank of the Saraswati River, northwest of Mathura. Ambikavan is notable because within it are deities of Sri Shiva and his wife's goddess Uma. Tatra Snatva Saraswatyam Devam Pashupatim Vibhum Anar Chur Arhani Ribhaktya Devim O king, after arriving there, they bathed in the Saraswati and then devotedly worshipped with various paraphernalia and powerful Lord Pashupati and his consorts, Goddess Ambika. Gavo Hiranyam Vasamsi Madhumadvanam Adrita Brahmanid Bhyodadhu Sarve Devona Priyatam Iti the coward man gave the brahmanas gifts of cows, gold, clothing, and cooked grains mixed with honey. Then the cowards prayed, May the Lord be pleased with us. Usu Saraswati Tire Jalam Prasya Yatavrata Rajanim Tam Mahabhaga Nanda Sunanda Kadaya Nanda Sunanda and other greatly fortunate cowherds spent that night on the bank of the Saraswati, strictly observing their vows. They fasted, taking only water. Sri Vishnu Chakravarti explains that Sunanda is the younger brother of Nanda Maharaj. Kaschin Mahanahis Dasmin Vipini Tibu Bhukshita Yadrichaya Gato Nandam 
Shayanam Uragor Grasit. During the night, a huge and extremely hungry snake appeared in that thicket. Slithering on his belly up to the sleeping Nanda Maharaj, the snake began swallowing him. Sachukro Sahina Grasta Krishna Krishna Mahanayam Sarpo Mam Grasate Tata Prapannam Parimochaya. In the clutches of the snake, Nanda Maharaj cried out, Krishna, Krishna, my dear boy, this huge serpent is swallowing me. Please save me, who am surrendered to you. Tasya Chandrani Chandranditam Shrutva Gopala Sahasotita Grastamcha Drishtva Yibhranta Sharpam Vivyadhur Ulmukai. When the coward men heard the cries of Nanda, they immediately rose up and saw that he was being swallowed. Distraught, they beat the serpent with blazing torches. Alatair Dahyama Nopi Namunchat Tam Urangama Tam Asprishat Pada Bhitya Bhagavan Satvatampati. But even though the fire bands were burning him, the serpent would not release Nanda Maharaj. Then the then the Supreme Lord Krishna, master of his devotees, came to the spot and touched the snake with his foot. Savai Bhagavata Srimat Pada Sparshahata Subha Heje Sarpavapur Hirtva Rupam Vidyadharaj Chittam The snake had all his sinful reactions destroyed by the touch of the Supreme Lord's divine foot. Thus he gave up the serpent's body and appeared in the form of a worshipable Vidyadhara. The word Rupam Vidyadharaj Chittam indicate that the Erst wild snake appeared in a beautiful form, worshipable among the demigods called Vidyadharas. In other words, he appeared as the leader of the Vidyadharas. Tam aprachad drishi kesha pranatam samavastitam dipyamanena vapusa purusham hema malinam. The Supreme Lord Hrishikesh and questioned his pers this personality who was standing before him with his head bowed, his brilliantly effulgent body bedecked in golden necklaces, with golden necklaces. The demigod was about to speak, and Lord Krishna wanted to focus everyone's attention on his words. Therefore, he personally inquired from the worshipful Vidyadhara, who was standing before him with his head bowed. Kobhavan paraya lakshmya rochate bhuta darshana. Katam jugup sitam metam katim vapra pito vasa. Lord Krishna said, My dear sir, you appear so wonderful, glowing with such great beauty. Who are you? And who forced you to assume this terrible body of a snake? Sharpa vacha aham vidyadhara kaschit sudarshana iti shrita shriya swarupa sampatya. Vimani Narcharandisha Vishin Virupa Girasa Prahasam Rupa Darpita Tairimam Prapito Yonim Pralabdhe Svena Apmana. The serpents replied, I am the well known Vidyadara named Sudarshana. I was very opulent and beautiful, and I used to wander freely in all directions in my airplane. Once I saw some homely sages in the lineage of Angira Muni. Proud of my beauty, I ridiculed them. And because of my sin, they made me assume this lowly form. Sapome nugrahayaiva kritastai karuna atma bhi yadaham loka garuna padas prishto hata subha I was actually, it was actually for my benefit that those merciful sages cursed me, since now I have been touched by the foot of the Supreme Personality, the Supreme Master of all the worlds, and have thus been re relieved of all inauspiciousness. My Lord, you destroy all fear for those for those who, fearing this material world, take shelter of you by touch of your feet, I am now freed from the curse of the sages. O destroyer of distress, please let me return to my planet. According to the Acharyas, the word apriche indicates that Sudarshana humbly requested the Lord for permission to return to his abode, where he might take up his duties again. Certainly, in a 
chastened state of mind. Prapanno smi maha yogin maha purusha satpate anujani hi maam deva sarva lokeshwareshwara. O Master of Mystic Power, O Great Personality, O Lord of the devotees, I surrender to you. Please command me as you will. O Supreme God, Lord of all lords for of the universe. Brahma danda vimukto ham sadhya stechita darshanat yannama grihnan akilan shotrin atman evacha atmanam evacha sadhya punati kim bhuyas tasya sprishta padahite O oh, infallible one, I was immediately freed from the Brahmana's punishment simply by seeing you. Anyone who chants your name purifies all who hear this chanting, as well as himself. How much more beneficial then is the touch of your lotus feet? Ityanu nyapya dasarham parikram ya bhivandyacha sudarshano divam yata kritra nandascha mochita there's receiving the permission of Lord Krishna, the demigod Sudarshana circumambulated him, bowed down to offer him homage, and then returned to his heavenly planet. And the marriage was thus del delivered from peril. Nishamya Krishna Sita Dhatma Vaibhavam Vrajauka So Vismita Cheta Sastata Samapya Tasmin Niyamam Punarajam Nripaya Yustat Kathayanta Adrita the inhabitants of Raj were astonished to see the mighty power of Sri Krishna. Dear King, they then completed their worship of Lord Shiva and returned to Vraja along the way, respectfully describing Krishna's powerful acts. Kadachid Atago Vindo Ramas Chadbhuta Vikrama Vijahratur Vane Ratriam Madhya Gaurajam. Madhya Gavraja Yoshitam. Once Lord Govinda and Lord Rama, the performers of wonderful feats, were playing in the forest at night when the young girls of Raj, with the young girls of Raj. This verse introduces a new pastime. According to the Acharyas, the occasion mentioned here is Holika Purnima, a day also known as Gaur Purnima. Upagiyamano Lalitam Stri Janair Baddha Swalankritanu liptangu go shragvino virajom Krishna and Balram wore flowers, garlands, and spotless garments. Their limbs were beautifully decorated and anointed. The women sang their glories in a charming way, bound to them by affection. Nishamukham manayantav uditod dupa tarakam. Malika Ganda Maktali Justam Kumuda Vayuna. The two lords praised the nightfall, signaled by the rising, raising, ra rising the moon and the appearance of stars, a lotus scented breeze, and bees intoxicated by the fragrance of jasmine flowers. Jagatu Sarva Bhutanam Manashravana Mangalam Taukal Payanto Yugapat Sarva Mandala Murchitam. Krishna and Balaram sang, producing the entire range of musical sounds simultaneously. Their singing brought happiness to the ears and minds of all living beings. Gopya stad gitam akranya murchita navidin navidan nirpa shramsad dukulam atmanam srasta kesha srajantata. The gopis became stunned when they heard this that song, forgetting themselves. O okay, king, they did not notice that their fine garments were becoming loose and their hair and garlands disheveled. Evam vikridatos vairam gayato sampramattavat sankachura iti khyato dana danu charo bhyagat. Where Lord Krishna and Lord Balram thus played according to their own sweet bills and sang to the point of apparent intoxication, a servant of Kuvera named Sankachura came upon the scene. Tayodnirikshato rajams tannatam pramadavjanam kroshantam kalayam kalayamasa disyudichyam ashankita. O king, even as the two lords looked on, Sankachita brazenly began giving the women off toward the north. 
the women who had accepted Krishna and Balaram as their lords began to cry out to them. According to Srila Vishnu Chakravarti, the demon Shankachuda shook a large stick at the beautiful young girls, thus frightening them and driving them toward the north. He did not actually touch them, as is corroborated by the following verse. Kroshantam Krishna Rameti Vilokya Swapari Graham Yetaga Das Yunagrasta Bhratarav Anvadhavatam Tam Hearing the devotees cry out, Krishna, Rama, and seeing that they were just like cows being stolen by a thief, Krishna and Balaram began to run after the demon. The lords called out in reply, do not fear. Then they picked up logs of the solid tree, quickly pursued that lowest of Guhuyakas, who swiftly ran away. When Sankachuda saw the two of them coming toward him like the personified forces of time and death, he was filled with anxiety. Confused, he abandoned the women and fled for his life. Tam anvadhavad govindo yatir yatra sadhavati jihirshusta chiro ratnam tasta rakshan striyo bala Lord Govinda chased the demon wherever he ran, eager to take his crest jewel. Meanwhile, Lord Balaram stayed with the women to protect them. Sri Vishnu Chakravarti explains that the women were fatigued from being driven away and thus Lord Balaram protected them and consoled them as they rested. Meanwhile, Lord Krishna went after the demon. Avirudha iva bhyetya shiras tasya duratmanaha jahara mushti naivanga sachura manim vibhu The mighty Lord overtook Sankachuda from a great distance as it as it from nearby, my dear king. And then with his fist, the Lord removed the wicked demon's head together with his crest jewel. Sankachuram nihatyaivam manim adaya bhasvaram agrajaya dadat pritya pasyantinam chayoshitam. Having thus killed the demon, Sankachuda, and taken away and taken away his shining jewel, Lord Krishna gave it to his elder brother with great satisfaction as the gopis watched. Various gopis perhaps thought that Govinda would give one of them the valuable jewel. To prevent rivalry amongst them, Sri Krishna happily gave that jewel to his older brother, Balaram. Thus ends the purport of the humble servants of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, to the 10th canto, 34th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled, Nanda Maharaj Saved and Shankachuda Slain. Chapter 35. The gopis sing of Krishna while he wanders in the forest. This chapter contains the songs of the gopis, uh, the songs the gopis sing to express their feelings of separation from Krishna when he goes to the forest during the day. As the gopis' mood of separation from Sri Krishna becomes ever more intense, his names, forms, qualities, and pastimes begin spontaneously manifesting in their hearts. Thus they join together and sing as follows. The beauty of Krishna attracts the minds of all. When he stands in his threefold bending way and plays upon his flute, the Siddha's wives, flying in the sky with their husbands, become attracted to him and forget external reality. The bulls, cows, and other animals in the pasture become stunned in ecstasy. They stand so still, with the grass unchewed between their teeth, they appear like figures in a drawing. Indeed, even the unconscious rivers stop flowing. Just see, when Krishna dresses himself in forest array in forest array and calls the cow's names by blowing on his flute even the trees and creepers become so ecstatic out of love that the limbs display eruptions and their sap pours down like torrents of tears the sound of krishna's flute causes the cranes swans and other birds in the lakes to close their eyes in deep meditation the clouds in the sky to gently rumble imitating the flute's vibration and even such authorities in science of music as Indra, Shiva, and Brahma to become astonished. 
And just as we gopis are anxious to offer everything we have to Krishna, so the wives of the black deer follow him about imitating us. When Krishna is returning to Vraj, he constantly plays his flute while his young companions chant his glories. And Brahma and other chief demigods come to worship his lotus feet. Thus the gopis feeling intense separation from Krishna sing of his pastimes. Shri Shukha Vacha Gopya Krishnevanam Yate Tam Anudrita Chetasa Krishna Leela Pragayantyo Ninyas Bhukhena Vasaran Shikadev Goswami said, Whenever Krishna went to the forest, the minds of the gopis would run after him, and thus the young girls sadly spent their days singing of his pastimes. Although the gopis enjoyed the direct association of Krishna at night in the Rasa dance, during the day he went about his normal duties, tending his cows in the forest. At that time, the minds of the gopis would run after him, but the young girls had to stay back in the village and do their own duties, thus feeling the pain of separation. They would sing about Sri Krishna's transcendental pastimes. Sri Gopya Uchuhu Vama Bahu Krita Vama Vama Bahu Krita Vama Kapulo Vagita Brur Adharar Pita Venum O Malangulibhir Ashrita Margam Gopya Ija Yati Tatra Mukunda Yomayana Vanita Saha Siddhair Ismitas Tat Upadharya Salajja Kama Margana Samar Pita Chita Pasmalam Yayur Apasmrita Nivya. The gopi said when Mukunda vibrates, the flute he placed to his lips, stopping its holes with his finger, his tender fingers, he rests his left cheek on his left arm and makes his eyebrows dance. At that time, the demigoddesses traveling in the sky with their husbands, the Siddhas, become amazed. And those ladies listen. They are embarrassed to find their minds yielding to the pursuit of lusty desires and their distress. And in their distress, they are unaware that the belts of their garments are loosening. The Jiva Goswami states that this chapter consists of a collection of statements the gopis made at various times as they stood in small groups here and there in Vrindavan. Antachitram Abala Shunutedam Hara Hasya Urasi Stira Vidyut Nanda Sunur Ayam Arta Junanam Narmado Yarhi Tujita Venu Vindasovra Vrinda so Raja Vrishamat Mrigo Gavo, Vinu Vadya, Hita Chetasa Arat, Danta Dasta Kavala Dhita Karna, Nidrita Likita Chitram Ivasan. O girls, the son of Nanda, who gives joy to the distressed, bears steady lightning on his chest as he, as, and has a smile like a jeweled necklace. Now please hear something wonderful. When he vibrates his flute, Rajas, bulls, deer, and cows, standing in groups at a great distance, are all captivated by the sound, and they stop chewing the food in their mouths and cock their ears. Stunned, they appear as if asleep or like figures in a painting. The word Stira Vidyut, steady lightning, refers to the goddess of fortune and resides in the chest of the Supreme Lord. When the animals of Vrindavan hear the sound of the flute, they become stunned in ecstasy, and thus they stop chewing their food and cannot swallow it. The gopis in separation from Krishna marvel at the extraordinary effect of the Lord's flute playing. Sri Sridhar Swami gives the following explanation of the compound word Hara Hasa, which compares the Lord's smile to a necklace. The word can mean he whose smile is brilliantly clear like a jewel necklace, or he whose smile is reflected from his jewel necklaces. Because while Krishna plays the flute, he bends his head down and smiles. The word can also mean he who smiles like a jewel necklace casts its effulgence upon his chest, or he whose necklaces shine brilliantly just like a smile. Barhina stabaka datu 
ಭಗ್ನಗತಯಸರಿಜ ಮುಕುಂದ ಇಮಿಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಪೇರೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ರೆಸ್ಲರ್ ಬೈ ಡೆಕೋರೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸಾಫ್ ವಿತ್ ಲೀವ್ಸ್ ಪೀಕಾಕ್ ಫೆದರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕಲರ್ಡ್ ಮಿನರಲ್ಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಕಂಪನಿ ಆಫ್ ಬಾಲರಾಮ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಕಾರ್ಡ್ ಬಾಯ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಫ್ಲೂ ಟು ಕಾಲ್ ದ ಕ್ರೌಡ್ಸ್ ಅಟ್ ದಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ದ ರಿವರ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ಫ್ಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ their water is stunned by the ecstasy they feel at, uh, as they eagerly wait for the wind to bring them the dust of his lotus feet but like us the rivers are not very pious and thus they merely wait while their arms tremble out of love the gopi state here that the sound of krishna's flute causes even inanimate objects like rivers to become conscious and then stun in ecstasy Just as the gopis could not always be in Krishna's physical association, the rivers could not come to the Lord's lotus feet. Although they desired the Lord, their movements were checked by ecstasy. Their arms, their waves, trembled with love of Godhead. Anucharae samanuvar nita vidya adi purusha ivachala bhuti vana charo girita te shucha ಪ್ರಣತಭಾರಟಪ ಮಧುಧಾರ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಹೃಷ್ಟ ದರ್ಶನೀಯ ತಿಲಕೋ ವನಮಾಲ ದಿವ್ಯಗಂಧ ತುಳಸಿ ಮಧು ಮತ್ತ ಅಲಿಕುಲರ್ ಅಲುಘು ಗೀತಮಭೀಷ್ಟ ಆದ್ರಿಯನ್ ಯರ್ಹಿ ಸಂಧಿತ ವೇಣು ಸರಸಿ ಸಾರಸ ಹಂಸ ವಿಂಗಾಸ್ ಚಾರು ಗೀತ ಹೃತ ಚೇಸ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮೂವ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಕಂಪನಿ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಹೂ ವೆಲಿ ಚಾಟ್ ದ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಮೆಗ್ನಿಫಿಸ್ ಇನ್ ಡೀಡ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ದಸ್ ಅಪಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲ್ ಯು ಗಾಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಬಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಇನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಸ್ಟಬಲ್ ಆಪ್ಯುಲೆನ್ಸಸ್ when the cows wander on to the mountain sides and krishna calls out to them with the sound of his flute the trees and creepers of the forest respond by becoming so luxuriant like fruits and flowers that they seem to be manifesting lord vishnu within their hearts as their branches bend low with the weight the filaments on their trunks and vines stand erect out of ecstasy of love, of of god and both trees and the creepers pour down a rain of sweet sap maddened by the divine honey like aroma of the tulsi flowers and the garland krishna wears swarms of bees singing loudly for him and that most beautiful of all persons thankfully acknowledges and acclaims their songs by taking his flute to his lips and playing it the charming flute song then steals away the minds of the cranes swans and other lake dwelling birds indeed they approach krishna close to their eyes and maintain in strict silence worship him by fixing their consciousness upon him in deep meditation shri vishnu chakravarti thakur has made several illuminating comments on this verse he gives the analogy that just as when householder vaishnavas hear a sankirtan party approaching they become ecstatic and offer obeisances so the trees and creepers in vrindavan become ecstatic when they, they hear krishna's flute ba and ba lo with their branches and vines the word darshaniya tilaka in the text in text 10 indicates not only that lord the lord is the most excellent to see but also that he decorated himself with attractive reddish tilak 
cricket for the mineral rich earth of Vrindavan forest. Sri Vishnu Chakravarti also points out that Tulsi, although exalted in many ways, is not normally considered an especially fragrant plant. However, early in the morning, Tulsi emits a transcendental fragrance that ordinary people cannot perceive, but that transcendental personalities fully appreciate. The bees who are privileged to swarm about the flower garlands worn by the Supreme Personality of Godhead certainly appreciate his fragrance. And Srila Vishnu Chakravarti quotes from the Bhagavatam 3.15.19 to the effect that the most fragrant plants in Vaikuntha also appreciate the special qualifications of Tulsi Devi. The word Sandhita Venu, in the extent, indicates that Lord Krishna places flute firmly upon his lips. And the melody emanating fr from that flute is certainly the most enchanting of sounds, as the gopis describe in this chapter. Sahabala, salab, sahabala, shrag avatam savilasa, tanushu chiti vrito raja devya, harshayan yadhi venu ravena, jata harsha uparam bhati vishwam, maharati kramana sankita cheta, manda manda anug. Garjati Megha Suhridam Suhridam Abhyavarshat Sumanobhis Thaya Yacha Vidadhat Pratapatram. O goddesses of Raja, when Krishna is enjoying himself with Balaram on the mountain slopes, playfully wearing a flower garland on top of his head, he gladdens all with the resonant vibrations of his flute. Thus he delights the entire world, and that time the nearby cloud, afraid of offending a great, a great personality, thunders very gently in accompaniment. The cloud showers flowers onto his dear friend Krishna and shades him from the sun like an umbrella. Tavasuta sati yadadhara bimbe datta venur anayata anayat svara chati Savanashastad upadharya suresha shakras sarva paramesti puroga Kavaya anata kandhara chitta Pasmalam yayur anish chitta tattva. O pious, o pious mother Yashoda, your son, who is ex expert in all the arts of herding cows, has invented many new styles of flute playing. When he takes his flute to his bimba red lips and sends forth the tones of his harmonic scale in variegated melodies, Rama, Shiva, Indra, and other chief demigods become confused upon hearing this sound. Although they are the most learned authorities, they cannot ascertain the essence of that music, and thus they bow down their heads and hearts. The word Tavasuta Sati, your son, O Chase Lady, clearly indicate that at this point, Mother Yashoda is amongst the young gopis, as they earnestly describe Lord Krishna's glories. According to Srila Vishnu Chakravarti, among the demigods led by Shakra, Lord Indra, were Upendra, Agni, and Yamaraj. Among those led by Sharva, Lord Shiva, were Katyayani, Skanda, Ganesha, Ma, were the four Kumars, Man, uh, Kumars and Nanda. Thus, the best collective intelligence in the universe could not definitely, de definitively analyze the enchanting musical arrangements of the Supreme Lord. Nijapadabja, Dalai, Vajra, Nirajan, Kushavi, Chitra, La, Lalamayam <laughs> As Krishna strolls through Raja and his lotus petal-like feet, mar marking the ground with the distinctive emblems of flag, thunderbolt, lotus, and elephant god, he relieves the distress of the ground, heels from the cow's hooves. As he plays his renowned flute, 
His body moves with the grace of an elephant. Thus we gopis who become agitated by Cupid when Krishna playfully glances at us stand still as trees unaware that our hair and garments are slackening. Here Madhi Yashoda is no longer in the company of the gopis who are confidentially describing their conjugal attraction to Sri Krishna. It is clear from the comments of Jeeva Goswami and other acharyas that the statements in this chapter were made at various times and places. This is natural since gopis were always absorbed in thoughts of Sri Krishna day and night. ृष्णृण्य now, now Krishna is standing somewhere counting his cows on a string of gems. He wears a garland of tulsi flowers that bears the fragrance of his beloved. And he has thrown his arm over the shoulders of an affectionate father and boyfriend. As Krishna plays his flute and sings, the music attracts the black deer's wives who approach that ocean of transcendental qualities and sit down beside him. Just like us coward girls, they have given up all hope of happiness in family life. Sri Jiva Goswami explains that in the afternoon, Sri Krishna dressed himself in new clothing and then went out to call the cows home. Srila Vishnu Chakravarti gives the following information about the transcendental cows of Vrindavan. For each of the four colors of cows, white, red, black, and yellow, there are 25 subdivisions, making a total of 100 colors. And such qualities as being colored like sandalwood, palm, tilaka, speckled, or having a head shaped like a mudanga drum, create eight further groups. You count these 108 groups of cows, Distinguished by color and form, Krishna is using a string of 108 jewel beads. Thus, when Krishna calls out, Hey Dhavali, the name of a white cow, a whole group of white cows come forward, and when he calls Humsi, Chandani, Ganga, Mukta, and so on, the 24 other groups of white cows come. The reddish cows are called Aruni, Kumkuma, Saraswati, etc. The blackish ones, Shamala, Humala, Yamuna, etc. And the yellowish ones, Pita, Pingala, Haritalika, etc. Those in the group with tilak marks on their foreheads are called Chitrata, Chitratilaka, Dirghatilaka. And on their foreheads are called uh, uh, Dirghatilaka and Tiryaktilaka. Are there, and there are groups known as Mudanga Mukhi, Mudanga Head, Simma Mukhi, Lion Head, and so on. Thus being called by name, the cows are coming forward and Krishna thinking that when it is time to bring them back from the forest, none should be forgotten. is counting them on his jewel beads. Kundadama krita kautuka vesho gopa godhana krita yamunayam nanda sunur anaghe tabavatso narmada narmada pranayinam Vijahara Mandavayur Upa Vatyanu Kulam Manayan Malayaja Sparshena Vandinastam Upadeva Ganae Vadya Gita Bali Bi Pari Vavru Osana Sishoda, your darling child, the son of Maharaj Nanda, has festively enhanced his attire with a jasmine garland. And he is now playing along the Yamuna in the company of the cows and coward boys, amusing his dear companions. The gentle breeze honors him with his soothing fragrance of sandalwood, while the various Upadevas, standing on all sides like panig panigrists, offer their music, singing, and gifts of tribute. 
Shri Jiva Goswami explains that the gopis are again in the courtyard of Mother Yashoda, the Queen of Raja. They are trying to encourage her by describing Krishna's return to Vrindavan after he has spent the day herding cows and playing. Sri Vishnu Chakravarti comments that the Upadevas, the minor demigods mentioned here, include the Gandharvas who are famous for their celestial music and dancing. Vatsalo Vraja Gavam Yadagadro Vandyamana Charanapati Vridhai Krishna Godhanam Upahya Tinante Gita Venur Anugedita Kirti Utsvam Shrama Uchapi Rishinam Unnayan Kurarajas Churita Shrak Ditsayait Suhid Ashisha Esha Devaki Jatara Bur Udu Raja. Out of great affection for the cows of Raja, Krishna became the lifter of Govardhan Hill. At the end of the day, having rounded up all his own cows, he plays a song on his flute, while exalted demigods standing along the path worship his lotus feet, and the coward boys accompanying him chant his glories. His garland is powered by the dust raised by cows' hooves, by the cow's hooves, and his beauty enhanced by his fatigue creates an ecstatic festival for everyone's eyes. Eager to fulfill his friend's desires, Krishna is the moon arisen from the womb of Mother Yashoda. According to the Acharyas, at this point the gopis climbed into the watchtowers of Vrindavan's houses so they could see Krishna as soon as possible when he returned home. Mother Yashoda was very anxious for her son to come back, and therefore she had the tallest of the beautiful young gopis climb up to see when he would arrive. It is implied here that, the, that Krishna was somewhat delayed on the way home because, he, because his lotus feet were being worshipped by the great demigods along the path. Madhavighurnita lochana ishat manada swasuhidam vanamali badara pandu vadano mridu gandam mandayan kanaka kundala lakshmya yadupate virada raja viharo yamini patir ivaishad dinante mudita vaktra upayati durantam Mochayan Raja Gavam Dinatapam. As Krishna respectfully greets his well wishing friends, his eyes roll slightly as from as if from intoxication. He wears a flower garland, and his beauty of his soft cheeks is accentuated by the brilliance of his golden earrings and the whiteness of his face, which has the color of bud, the Badara berry. With his cheerful face resembling the moon, resembling the moon, Lord of the night, the Lord of the others moves with the grace of regal, with the grace of a regal elephant. Thus he returns in the evening, delivering the cows of Raja from the heat of the day. The word Gavam is constructed from the Sanskrit word Go, which means cow or senses. Thus Sri Krishna is coming back to the village of Raja, relieved relieved the inhabitants of Vrindavan from the distress their eyes and other senses felt during the day because of being separated from, from direct contact with him. Shri Shukha Vacha Evam Rajasthriya Rajan Krishna Lilanu Gayati Remire Hasu Tachitas Tanmanaska Mahodaya Shri Shukadev Goswami said, O king, thus during the daytime, the women of Vrindavan took pleasure in continuously singing about the pastimes of Krishna, and those ladies' minds and hearts are absorbed in him, were filled with great festivity. This verse definitely confirms that the so-called pain of the heart broken gopis is actually great spiritual bliss. On the material platform, pain is pain, period. But on the spiritual platform, so-called pain is simply a different variety of spiritual ecstasy. The Western countries... People take pleasure in mixing different flavors of ice cream to produce wonderful combinations of flavor. Similarly, on the spiritual platform, Sri Krishna and his devotees expertly mix the flavors of spiritual bliss, and thus every day was a treat for the gopis. 
Thus and the purpose of the humble servants of his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, to the 10th canto, 35th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled, The Gopi Singh of Krishna as he wanders in the forest. Vantra Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai tai go the Hare Krishna.